From time immemorial, mankind has used scientific methods to understand nature and to solve important problems. Some important characteristics of scientific method are observation, experimentation, hypothesizing, and model building. If the factors under question can be measured, and if the relation between them are expressed in a mathematical form, then such relationships constitute a quantitative model. Quantitative models, even the simplest of them, have been found to be extremely useful in many situations. This is because they are objective, precise, and are easily manipulable. Let us consider the question, how to find the distance between moon and a given point A on Earth? If it were like measuring the length of a clock, one could have directly measured it with a measuring rod. But the direct method is not possible here. Here is an indirect method. Choose a place B whose distance AB from A is known. Simultaneously, measure the angle of elevation of moon from A and B. The relation between MA, AB, and angles A and B can be expressed as shown here. This expression is our quantitative model. We call it a model because the relationship is only approximate. It ignores Earth's curvature and makes many assumptions about space and light. However, using this model, ancient Greeks computed the distance between Earth and Moon to an accuracy of 95%. For a long time, quantitative models were confined largely to physical sciences and engineering. In the military, for example, such techniques were used in the designing and production of equipment. However, scientific method and models can also be used in making policies on the operation of the equipment. This was realized for the first time during the Second World War. Let us take for example the problem of attacking submarines by dropping bombs from airplanes. The bombs should be set to explode at a certain depth beneath the surface of water. This setting cannot be decided at the time of attack. Therefore, it should be preset. The scientists assisting the British Coastal Command found that a bomb can fail for two reasons. One, the aim of the bomb is poor and hence it completely misses its target. The second reason, even when the aim is good, the bomb may fail if it explodes at a wrong depth. The scientists thoroughly analyzed the data and made the following recommendation. Attack only the surface submarines and use a depth setting of 20 feet for all bombs. Implementation of this policy improved the effectiveness of anti-submarine attacks by a factor greater than two. After the war was over, it was realized that the approach adopted for planning military operations could be used for aiding decision-making of executives in any organization, be it government or private, manufacturing or service. As this method was first applied in the context of military operations, the name Operations Research is used for using scientific method for decision making in any organization. This brings us to the question as to what extent can quantitative models help 
in managerial decision making. Let us look at a textile mill that manufactures lungis and shirtings. The questions about how much quantity it should produce during the next season may be simple, but not the answer, because the possibilities are innumerable. The marketing manager says that at most he can sell 11,000 meters of lungi material and 22,000 meters of shirtings. Then, should the company make 11,000 meters of lungis and 22,000 meters of shirtings? No, certainly not. The foreman says that the loom shed capacity is only 3,000 loom days. The proposed plan exceeds this limit. So we have a problem. Should the mill reduce lungi production or should it reduce shirting production or both? A little bit of quantification should be of help here. This new straight line tells that all the points above it exceed the available loom days and all points below are within the limit. The model has already thrown up a surprise. It is better to reduce lungi production rather than reduce shirting, even though per meter contribution of lungi is higher than that of shirting. But wait a minute. The purchase department warns that we won't have enough raw material to produce this mix, which complicates the matters more. Therefore, further quantification is necessary to revise our plan. There are quantitative techniques which not only help us to know the feasible and infeasible plans, but also tell us the best plan according to a specified objective. The plan that leads to the highest contribution need not be the same as that which maximizes utilization of loom days. Several trials are needed with the model before a satisfactory plan is found. Next, let us take the plight of a vendor of firecrackers. He buys the crackers in lots from a wholesaler. He does not want to be supplied with bad lots. But how to make sure that the lot is good? If he tests each and every piece, then what is he going to sell? Therefore, he can test only one sample of items from each lot. But then, what should be his sampling policy? There are many complications in choosing a sampling policy. First, a good sample does not imply a good lot, nor a bad sample a bad lot. Too large a sample is costly for testing, whereas too small a sample is too risky to rely upon. How many bad pieces in the sample should be considered as tolerable? There are quantitative techniques that can help managers choose such sampling plans. There are many, many situations which lend themselves to analysis by operations researchers. In a production shop, in what sequence are the jobs to be processed so as to satisfy due dates and also at the same time minimizing machine idle time. Several quantitative rules have been developed to schedule jobs to satisfy different objectives. In a production shop, 
In what sequence are the jobs to be processed so as to satisfy due dates? And also, at the same time, minimizing machine idle time. Several quantitative rules have been developed to schedule jobs to satisfy different objectives. In what manner is the raw material stock to be cut so as to minimize wastage? This problem is known as stock cutting problem. Several models have been proposed by operation research specialists for this problem. How best should the Department of Marketing allocate its advertising budget? What should be the frequency of advertising? And in which newspapers or journals should they advertise? Several media planning models which address this problem have been developed. What is the best way in which an individual or an organization can invest their funds? Several quantitative models deal with the behavior of capital markets. The quantitative models for real situations usually tend to be computationally complex and cannot be solved by hand. The complicating factors are the problem at hand usually has a large number of solutions. It has many complex relations between variables. There are hundreds of thousands of variables to be considered. There is uncertainty associated with the values of the variables. In such cases, use of a computer is a must to deal with the models. The modern computer systems offer a wide variety of interactive software tools that ease the task of model building and analysis on computers. These tools should enable operation researchers to improve the implementation of their techniques. According to a sample survey of several corporations, the areas where operations research was actually being used were forecasting, production scheduling, inventory control, capital budgeting, transportation, plant location, quality control, advertising and sales research, equipment replacement, maintenance and repair, accounting procedures, packaging. For a successful implementation of operations research models, commitment and support of the decision makers and a proper communication between the user and the operations researcher are absolutely essential. With the advent of the computer revolution, implementation of operations research models has become less expensive and easier. Operations research is no longer an esoteric activity, but is an important function in many organizations.